Sede de la rabiate, e si da 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 ya da baraki beliate, e se de la la radosa, e se de de la la liade, e se de 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 ade, e liade, e liade. Come on, I'm intentional tonight. Hey, Allah da berati la da ya thay. Ha ha ha, Elohi. Sing, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh, 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 oh. Worship His holy name. Worship His holy name. Ah, yeah, 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 Let's do Psalms 27, from verse 1 to the end. So, are we there? Psalms 27, from verse 1. All right. Okay, so let's go. One, two, go. The Lord, the Lord is, is my light and my salvation. salvation. Whom, whom shall, shall I fear? The Lord, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of, of whom shall I be afraid? When, when the wicked, wicked even my enemies and, and my foes, came upon me to eat up my, my flesh, they stumbled, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise, rise against, against me, in this will I be confident. confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that, that will I seek after, that, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Yea, O Lord, when, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me, and answer me. When thou sayest, seek, seek my face, my heart say unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I see. Hide not thy face, not thy face far from me, put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help, leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of my enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. 
I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. In Psalm 108, from 1 to the end. Psalms chapter 108, from 1 to the end. Okay. Are we all there? Yes, I'm there. Okay, let's wait for it. Okay, we are there. All right, let's go. This is our one night. Everything. It's our one night, sir. Everything. Everything. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> one one nine. <laughs> For I shall delight in your commandments. You shall have law, and I shall meet all my words in your commandments. Which I love, and I will meditate on his statutes. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart stands in awe of your word. I rejoice at your word as one that finds grace for. I hate and abhor life, but your Lord do I love. Seven times a day do I praise you because of your righteous judgment. Great peace are they who love your law, and nothing shall offend them. Lord, I have hope for your salvation and done my commandments. My soul has kept your testimony, and I love them exceedingly. I have kept your precepts and your testimony, for all my ways are before you. Let me cry, come near before thee. O oh Lord, give me understanding according to your work. Let my supplications come before thee. Deliver me according to your work. My lips shall utter praise when you have taught me your status. My tongue shall speak of your work. For all your commandments are righteous. Let your hand help me, for I have chosen your precepts. I have longed for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. My soul be, and it shall praise thee. And let your judgments help me. Stray like a lost sheep. Seek and serve do not forget. Praise the Lord. Sister Joyce will give us a hymn, and after that we will see the first word from him, from Pastor Shalangwa, Sister Joyce, and come and give us a hymn. To God be the glory, great things he has done, so loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life a return to Let a 
Please, let's be on our seats. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I want to appreciate Daddy, and I want to appreciate Mommy. Pastor Toppe is here. I appreciate you, sir. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you this evening. We thank you for the privilege to speak your word in truth. We ask that you grant us light in the name of Jesus. And we ask that you speak your word into our spirit man. Indeed, in the name of Jesus, that indeed we hear it and not just be a hearer, but that your word will bring transformation to our heart in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are free. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, exceedingly more is actually a desire of God for every believer. That is the state where God wants to bring each and every one of us. Hallelujah. It's a, it's, it's a fact that God intends to bring everyone into this exceedingly more. Amen. But there are there's a kind of man that God has in his heart. If we look at the scripture, Matthew chapter 5, he said, Blessed are the meek, right? For they shall inherit the earth. That was the scripture. It means that in the heart of God, there is no extent to how far God intends to bless each and every one. He can bring you into any realm that you want. But... That inheritance belongs to a particular kind of person. It's called the meek. It's called what? The meek. So in the journey of God, he will, he will begin to, to ensure that that man that will inherit the earth must come into the criteria that he has in his heart. Amen. So, when we look at it in this order, it means that God's intention is to ensure that man come under his dealing until he is able to submit himself to the dealings of God, that he can be able to become a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, let me go to my, my notes. The method of God 
in achieving anything on earth through a man varies according to his target. Because the problem of man is that first thing is unbrokenness. And another thing is that man is not in alignment consistently with God. Hallelujah. So what God will intend to do so that he can bring you into meekness, because the inheritance of the earth is for the meek, is that he wants to ensure that this unbrokenness will be dealt with, and then he'll bring you into alignment. So what God will do is that he'll begin to minister some dealings into your life. Amen. Please, I want us to be here. I want our mind to be here. Amen. Amen. So what he will begin to do is that he want to ensure that he begins to minister some dealings into your life so that he will bring out the best out of you. For example, it's natural for a man, right, to have pride. It is natural for a man to be clever. It is natural for a man to be full of himself. So you see, the target of God is to ensure that first thing is to deal with the things that will hinder the man from entering into the blessing. So he will begin to bring light. If that man is indeed proud, you begin to bring light in the area of pride. Then you begin to usher men into your life to ensure that the pride is broken. As you continue administering light, right, he's bringing you into this thing so that God can begin to, can begin to unveil himself and begin to bring himself into manifestation through your life so that you can enter into the blessing. Amen. For example, now we have Abraham. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me tonight. For example, now we have Abraham. Abraham was a man that was under the dealings of God and he was under the light of God. Amen. Now, as he began to join you with God, right, we could see that there were some dealings in the life of Abraham. And we could see that Abraham went through so much so that God is going to make him the, inherit, the man who will inherit the earth. First was a journey to leave his kindred. Everything that is familiar with his life, everything that looked familiar in his life was to ensure that he depart from that avenue. And then as he began to join it, it was not that alone. He began to bring him into contention with his own nephew and they parted way. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when you look at it now, after that Lot was captured, amen, after that Lot was captured, what did God do? God sent Abraham on the journey, and Abraham went to go and, 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 and rescue Lot. After that Lot was rescued, Abraham brought the tithe to Melchizedek, right? Now, after that the tithe was, was, was given to Melchizedek, that was a statement of dealing, actually, between Abraham and God. That was, nobody taught him how to give this offering unto God, right? Now, the declaration of Melchizedek from chapter 14 and verse 19 was that, thou Abraham, a blessed man. You are a possessor of the heavens and the earth. Right? Now, what brought Abraham into this, into this blessing? It was because of the dealings of God over his life. It was because of the brokenness of God over his life. God was able to find entrance into his heart. So, Abraham could submit. And then God came. And he received the instruction in meekness. And he was open to the dealings of God, and God pronounced a blessing to him. It means that if we want to enter into exceeding more, right, there's going to be dealings over our life that will ensure that each and every one of us will come into alignment with God. And the administration of God is going to be both internally and externally. So you will begin to ensure that things around your life externally will begin to trouble your life so that, amen, so that you come into alignment to what he wants to achieve through you. If your cry is that you want to be a, a, a big man, you want to have money, you want to have finance, you have to, there is always a requirement on the table of God for every man before you will be able to enter into the blessing. Hallelujah. Now, if you look at the dealings of the act of the apostle is that first thing is that they began to be in trouble. 
the Pharisees troubled them, the community troubled them, everybody around them were a trouble to them. And then they came to the understanding of oneness in the spirit. And then the Bible began to talk about from verse chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, they were in one accord. So when things happen to them, they will journey together and begin to, to, to open up to whatever God is, is demanding over their life. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you begin to hear testimonies of result over their life. Why? Because these men were dealt with by the Holy Ghost. There were some trainings that were administered to them. It didn't just happen overnight. But we, we in our generation is that we want to jump into mighty things at once. No, God does not work with man that way. You don't just jump into a thing and expect it to explode overnight. Exceeding more is for all, but there is a kind of person in the heart of God. There is a kind of man in the heart of God. For example, now, Ezine can be, she might, she might, she might desire that she want to be the best chef in the whole world or the best chef in, 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 in Akure. It's possible. It is in the heart of God. But there is a kind of person that God will intend to release his resources upon. Is a man that has stayed under a dealing of God. Is a man that has submitted himself to the dealing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just like in our gathering now, there are many things that will, will ensure, God will ensure that it happens. But without dealing, God will not be able to release it. God will not be able to submit it to us. Why? Because he intends that every man first should enter into his own kind of man. Just like Jesus. When we look at, when we look at, when we look at Adam, Adam was a, indeed a perfect person. He was a perfect vessel of God. But he was an incomplete vessel. Adam, every man that is created from Adam time that refused to receive Jesus, they are perfect vessels. They are perfect creation, but they are not complete. Why? We could see it in chapter 2. Amen. That there was a tree that was placed, and it was a tree of life, and it was a tree of knowledge of good and evil. So it means that man was supposed to eat of this tree so that he can enter into perfection. That was the intention in the heart of God. I'm just trying to bring us to understanding of why there are things that will not happen. No matter how we cry, we cannot escape dealings. We cannot escape the workings of God over our life. That's the truth. No matter how we try to claim scripture, quote scripture, say things, there are things that you can't just enter. There is a kind of person that is in the heart of God. So what happened? In, in Adam's case is that Adam failed to choose the right thing. He rather he went to go and take the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he failed God and he failed humanity at once. And every man that journey after Adam, every single person, he was incomplete. There was life that was lacking in him. Until when Jesus came on the scene and there was no declaration over Jesus, until after 30 years when he came for baptism, that this is my beloved son in whom the dealing was in him. There was a work that had happened. So there was a declaration that in whom I am well pleased. So it means that he has journeyed and he has watched him. Now he has taken life. Just like the scripture that our father gave us in the beginning. He said, I abide in him and he in me. I abide in his law. So whatsoever I do, it has to be in his law. If I go outside his law, it means that God is not responsible to whatever that happened to me. God is not responsible to whatever that happened to me. We can see it. So after, after the declaration, we could see the heavens was open. And then men began to follow Jesus. And then men began to follow Jesus. And before his crucifixion again, there was another declaration. Because alignment has taken place. He, he, he was shining. The transformation has taken place inward out. The life of God was revealed in him. The disciple could not deny that this man has worked with God and there is, there, is, there, is, there, is, there is visible transformation. There is visible transformation in the life of this person. So it means that God could crown this man a lot of glory. I know that this man can enter into exceeding more. Why? He has worked with the Father and he has stayed in his love. And he has remained in his love. He has remained in his dealing. And he has not left his path. One day, 
So Bible said, God said, hear he him. So, so all this while that Jesus has been giving testimony, Jesus has been talking about the Father, Jesus has been talking about whatever he has been talking about, so there was no declaration for men to hear him. There was nothing like that. So it is now time. We could see visibly there is a working of God over your life. We could see visibly that this man has a dealing. I can bless him. I can take him into abundance. I can take him into substance. I can take him into whatever that he desire. I can make him the best in his time. Hear ye him. There is a dealing. There is a dealing. There is a dealing. For every man that must that will enter into abundance, that will enter whatever more you are looking for, anointing, grace. Ah, there is a template. There are things that if you don't stay on course, it will, it, you will profess the scripture. You will confess the scripture. We will not deny that you are not born again, but we are not going to see Christ, and your world will not touch wherever that is coming out of your spirit. Your world can never know. Nothing that is, that is proceeding out of your spirit will never touch. There will be no more. Even though this one is a state where God wants to bring every person to. But we will never touch it. I hope you know that it is a broken man that can have a channel to, to bring out God. It is a man that is broken, a man that is aligned. A man whose heart is open unto the Lord that can engineer God into a territory, that can engineer God into the life of the people, that can bring God upon the sin and people will see. is a man that is broken, a man that is not proud, a man whose flesh is not the God of his life. A man whose, 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 whose entire life is not based on himself. Abraham was a correct man. So God could work with Abraham. And God could, could bring a blessing even unto Christ. Because the blessing that we were looking for was not even Isaac. It is Christ himself. He entered. Till eternity, we are, going to be, we are going to be called after Christ. Because there was a man that stayed on course. You want to touch your generation in whatever field? You are not in alignment. You are not in dealings with God. You want to enter into abundance and you are not in dealing with God. Ah! Paul said, ah! Did you remember the testimony of Paul? He said, I persecute them. I am, I am the one who persecuted them. But when the Lord came at Damascus, he said, Lord, what do you have me do? He was a boastful man until the day of encounter. There is nothing again. Then when you begin to understand um, 2 Corinthians, which is the perfect church, not the 1 Corinthians. The Second Corinthian church were the perfect church. You begin to hear his statement like, I die daily. Though the outward man perish it. God, that was a man that has done it with God. I thought he was a proud man. I thought he was a man that was boastful. But you could see him now. He can declare it. He was not, that, that was not an ordinary statement. He said, I wish I could leave. I wish I can go to the Father, but I want to leave. So that I, if I abide with you, it will be for your gain. Can you see a man? I have finished my race. What should I do now? And today, if we mention Paul, before you know a brother that is around you, Paul, you knew that there was a Paul. There was an inheritance. Blessed are they who are meek. There, there is a kind of person. There is a kind of person in the heart of God. Whatever God wants to achieve on earth. You have been working with God. You have been born again since you were three years, since you were two years. Since Some of us even give testimony. When we were in Sunday school, we gave our life to Christ and we have been joining, but there is no speakings of God over your life. There is no dealings of God over your life. There is nothing God can commit into your hand. Nothing! Nothing! God could not, cannot commit anything into your hand. He cannot come to you in the, in, in the day to speak to your heart. He cannot come to you in the night to speak to your, to, to your heart. He cannot come at any time to speak to, because you are too occupied by your outward man. You are too occupied by yourself. You are too occupied and then you want to enter. There is, there is, there is so much more. The Lord is my shepherd. No, 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 I have the war. This, this, this. No, that is not the scripture. I, sir, that is not the scripture. That is not the, the scripture I know is that men walk with God. 
the scripture that I know men journeyed with God. The scripture that I know they gave themselves unto the Lord. That was why it was called a scripture. They gave their life everything and today God has given them the world has given them the earth you call Peter before you know another Peter there was a Peter that walked with God you say John ah oh, John has come to your mind he has walked with God there is a testimony over his life so it is easy for God to release if I begin to call names, you know that. Before I mention them, before you know another name, you already know these are the men. Why they have worked with you. God has this for all. But are we ready to journey with God? Are we ready to submit ourselves unto the dealings of God? Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready to journey with God? So that we can have whatever God wants to give. We are tired of people saying they are Christian, but there is no touch of God. I should be able to have a conversation with my brother here. In five minutes, I should be able to discern what kind of life proceeds from our conversation. Behind the words, there is a tone, there is a motive. Behind the sweet things, behind the things that are coming out of our mouth, God wants to bring us into his dealings. God wants to bring every man into his dealing and walk. Every man, I am a man of God. I am okay. I'm a man of God. Do you know the reason why some of us demons cannot respect us? It is not so according to scripture. They were supposed to respect the name Jesus. You don't have life. So even nature that's supposed to respect your word cannot respect your word. Even nature that's supposed to bow to your word because you're supposed to be in charge. There is no life. God cannot come out. God cannot come out. As some of us, our heart is empty. It's not even half. It's empty. Empty of God. The only time we know God is when we listen to messages. The only time when we know God is when we hear, um, what do they call it, uh, music. Somebody, that is the only time we know about God. There is no stay with God. And God is speaking to me. And I'm talking to God. I know there is a deep calling. Nothing more. Nothing more. Nothing. Nothing. That is the only time I will come and see be proud. Pride killing us and our generation. Nothing more. God cannot be seen. Your, your, your skill. Whatever you are looking for cannot be seen with the touch of God. God is more than a word. I say God is more than a word. He's more than the letters. The right doctrines are good. The right knowledge of the word is good. But it's far beyond that. If you stay there, they are called dead letters. They are called dead letters. It is a communication of spirit to spirit. That is why the psalmist said deep. Ah. I should be able to stay here and then it will be a fellowship of deeps. Your deep, he call it to my deep. God will be seen. Your deep is calling to my deep. God will be seen. His deep is called, is a fellowship of deeps. Is a koinonia of deeps. Is a koinonia of deeps. Deeps, deeps. That is the intention of God every time they gather. Peter said, why did you lie to the Holy Ghost? That was all. <laughs> and the spirit will touch another spirit. He said, the same way, look at the feet of those that carry. Oh my God. If we don't wake up to whatever God is doing, I tell you it will always be word and fashion. We'll beautify the environment. We'll make everything look good, but there is no touch of God. In our families, there is no touch of God. In our marriages, there is no touch of God. I, I cause that demon. He appears in my house. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. Ah, no. There is no touch of God. There is no touch of God. She knows me. Before any medication first, I minister prayer. She, oh my God. 
God is looking to bless. God is looking for, but there is a kind of man. Adam missed it. And if we keep missing it, we are following Adam, not Christ. Because the people that Christ raised, the earth, it, indeed, he gave them. They were meek in heart. The dealings of God were seen in their life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. There are some qualities that will bring more of God in the gathering of the people. You want to see a man that is meek in the spirit? You want to see a man that has dealings with God? There are qualities. Oh, that man of God, there are qualities. Are you approachable? You must be highly approachable. Don't take it just like what. What I mean by approachable, it means that I can have contact with you. I can have fellowship with you. I can have contact with you. I can have fellowship with you. You want to grow? You want to see more? Be someone that is approachable by God. I can, do you remember Nicodemus and Jesus? Jesus was not proud. Nicodemus could still come and talk to Jesus. When he came, they, they, it was so open. Jesus began to reveal to him from uh, John chapter 3, from verse 3 to verse 7. He began to reveal to him the mysteries of the kingdom. How can I enter into it? It, it was an open fellowship. Can I come to you and you not be proud? Can I come and have fellowship and touch God and not be proud? You are raising, this is my son, ministry. Can we have fellowship and share the life of God? Jesus was that open. He could give life just by communication, just by contact, just by fellowship. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Another one is that you are highly spiritually sensitive. Some of us can come into a gathering of brethren, even if even, even it's a shop, and you stand aloof. You become higher than the gathering. People are singing, you are sitting and folding hands, you are judging who. God cannot minister. God cannot come. God cannot unveil himself in such kind of gathering. You are already above God, so you don't need God. You are above him, you can't need God. You are aloof, you are bigger than everybody there. You are already measuring them, no, this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sir, God cannot, that meeting is dead already. Let's just close and go home. He is requiring people that will come and be spiritually sensitive. Are they brethren? Did they have the spirit of the Lord? Is the spirit of God here? Fellowship. Open your heart to touch God, not the person leading. You can't, you can't. And then the number third one, which is the hardest, is mutually corporate. There is something called corporate fellowship. Do you remember the story of Apollos? He was, he was skilled in, in, in the doctrine of John, just baptism. And what did Aquila and Priscilla do? They took him. Did they cast him off? Did they say, you have a spirit of Belial, we cast you off? Did they do that? What did they do? They took him. You are supposed to be the shoulder of your brethren in the house of God. If you are the only one growing spiritually, you are not a spiritual man. In a gathering where there are many people, they are all believers, you are the only high person, you are not really a spiritual man. You, you are not bringing God out. God is not supposed to be hidden. You are supposed to have a fellowship corporately and begin to release the life of God. Men are supposed to touch God and know God through your life. They came and they taught him. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't even run away from the meeting. In fact, they stayed there. And then they began to teach. 
they began to teach. And then lastly, you must be spiritually perceptive. This is where edification comes from. It, it does not really mean that it must be your spiritual father that can send the word of God to your spirit. It means that even a child, whosoever that is born of the spirit can speak a word and touch your spirit man. A doctrine, right, is acquiring right knowledge, but edification is having contact with the Holy Ghost. Edification is having, so it means that anybody can come and speak the word of God. And if the word of God penetrates into your spirit, you are not supposed to close it, you are supposed to receive it. That pain is supposed to bring a remembrance in case you repeat it again. That is where transformation comes from. That's where building up comes from. That's where building up comes from. That's where transformation will come. It must not be only your spiritual father that speaks the word of God. Amen. We, 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 we kill most meetings because of this. Maybe you come into a service and it's not your spiritual father. And in your spirit, you have killed the meeting already and you have corrupted the atmosphere that's supposed to be pure. If we live our life just by feeding ourselves what we want part time, without allowing God coming to us part time, we will never see the hand of God like how our father saw. We will not see more of God in God's dreams. We will not see more of his goodness in God's dreams or in our life if we continue to live like this, carnally, carnally, based on the flesh, nothing more. We are not saying you are not born again. If that is your, is good. It is beyond that. There is a life that we are supposed to touch. During fellowship, there is a life, there is a life. There is a lie. So can we, can we desire that we begin to live like accurate men? Both in whatever we want to do, just like I said earlier, whatever you want, whatever you want to become, there is a requirement of God. Whatever you want to see, there is a requirement of God for your positioning. If your cry every time God brings dealing is to cry and run away and become, you will not, you, you, you will not enter. Let our heart begin to desire God sincerely. Let our fellowship be more of God than the flesh. Let most of our gathering be more of God than the flesh. Let all of our seeking is for positioning. Lord, bring me into alignment. Lord, bring me into your dealing that I will attain this. There was a man called Chaji Fini. I love reading about this man because of the kind of work that this man. He said, before you can give back to a child, Isaiah 66 verse 8 must be in place so you groan. So every safe child is that they go, they give their self to these things. They groan to see God in territory. They groan to see God in the life of whatever they are doing. And we have been singing the faith of our fathers, holy faith. When are we going to be singing the faith of the sons? Is also a holy faith. 
If all of us only depend on the fact that no man wants to walk with God, no man wants to open up his spirit unto God, no, the faith of our fathers, holy faith, glory to God, we love the faith of our fathers. When are we going to sing about the faith of the son? When will the sons come forth so that we to be the, the, their faith is also a holy faith? I want my faith to be a holy faith. Yes, that's the truth. I want my own faith, very faith, to be a holy It's not just the faith of the fathers. I want God to help our heart to see that exceeding, exceedingly more is, pos, is a possibility. But there is a requirement. There is a calling. There is a bidding in the heart of God that each and every one of us must enter. I know you have had one or two things. Can we bow our head to speak to God? Can we speak to God? My time is up. Let, let God help my heart. Lord, help my heart. Help me. I know you want more. You want, you want more for me. But there is a requirement. There is a requirement. There is a requirement. Holy Ghost, help me. Holy Ghost, help me. Holy Ghost, help me. Thank you, Pastor Shalangwa, for... Praise the Lord. I want to welcome every one of us once again to our first uh, meeting on uh, Wednesday, our inaugural meeting. Can we celebrate our Father? And uh, Pastor Shalango has opened up our Wednesday meeting. Can we put some appreciate God in his life, in the life of, of his title? And uh, this message is very, very important and also very important to me the message uh, that Pastor Sharon has just spoken now, and it's very, very profound and very, very deep. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, yes. Amen. Bro Marvin, you are welcome. You are welcome home. Amen. Bro Marvin traveled for a very long time. Yes. Eh? Can we, have, can we celebrate him? Bro Marvin was in way. He traveled for how many years now? Oh. Eh? Eh? For more than eh, five years, have you? Uh -huh, but, you know. Uh, so, from having you are welcome. You are welcome to my sister, Amen, your wife. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every one of us who are welcome. And uh, please remind me your name again. You say I've forgotten your name. Huh? Yes, no? Eh? Uh -huh. That's the wife's sister, Fortune. Can we appreciate her? Say that picture. Bro well, Marvin, it's good to have you. Abby, yes. Bro well, Marvin really fought when we were looking for, we we're trying to get a thing. Thank you so much. I, but well, Marvin fought. You know, he fought. When well, we wanted to get a thing and stuff like that. And, you know, I saw the heart and the love. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I will celebrate you once again. Amen. Uh, Pastor Jeremiah and the uh, Sister Topper and uh, Gospel. Amen. We are welcome. Amen. Amen. You are also welcome home again. They too, they travel for a long time. Eh? Whether it's Sister Topper that took uh, her on the, on, on the journey or he took this, the, yes, the wife on the journey. But I know that it's not Gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome. Amen. Also, another man that has uh, been in travel for a very long time. You see, he has traveled for more than 10 years. Pastor Rua. <laughs> can we celebrate? Can we appreciate it? I don't know if travelers are here so well today. Amen. So, <laughs> I think it's a sign. Pastor Rua, you are welcome. A lot of us don't know him. How many of us know Pastor Rua? <laughs> it's one, my, only my wife. And uh, people, too. People know him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Like 10 years ago, before he, he took a journey. Amen. So there is, a, there is a posture that we are supposed to take in meetings like this that would actually help us to be edified. Edification is not just merely acquiring doctrinal knowledge here and there, packing knowledge and all of that. 
it is for us to have contact with the Holy Spirit. And for us to have that contact with the Holy Spirit, there's a posture we must take in corporate meetings and wherever we find ourselves. Praise God. Amen. I won't put our hands together for sister. Mommy Shalangwa. Amen. Say she was listening to her husband. All right, one more person. Okay, sister divine. Praise God. Pastor Shalangwa, thanks for the message. I think what I learned from the process of the teaching was the place of um, I die daily and uh, Paul said, though the outward man perish, but the inward man is being renewed by right fellowship. I think we have wrong fellowship all over the world today, so I think I'm blessed to be here because this is a platform whereby truth is not being mixed with something else. You know, when you are going through, you talk about dealing. The only person that I know he attained greatness in the Bible and does not go through dealing, fell, which is Solomon, King Solomon. He didn't go through dealing. He was born on the platter of gold, he grew in gold, and he died in gold and he missed it actually. It was not like his father, David, who went through a lot. David was anointed as king, and he didn't become king immediately, he was anointed. He has to stay in the wilderness, he, had, he, fought, he fought battles to stand out, you know, as a king that the world has never had. There's no king like David till today, I'm talking about in the in terms of ruling as a leader in the physical, in the political world. There's no king like David. So my blessing here today is that, you know, it knocks out what you teach today, it knocks out religion from me. You know, religion that, when you don't have, you know this kind, when you don't have money, you know this teaching that, that will say that, ah, that one devil from your father's village, or you know, all those things are, they are wrong, they are wrong teachings. God will allow you to go through process, and finances might come into it, God might make, God might shut doors at you, so that you can grow in the spirit before some certain things in the physical can come. So when God does not answer some of our financial prayer, it's not that he's not hearing, he's hearing, he's in good tune with us, but he needs us to go through a process, a dealing, whereby we can be purified like Zachariah said, as God is purified in the fire seven times for the beauty to come out. So when we hear, here in this platform, in Taranos Hall, I am learning that there is nothing like devil holding your destiny. Yeah, there is nothing, he's dealing. When you, you, you have to, we have to go through the process to be purified, to be able to come out, you know, as, as gold, for, for the beauty to be seen, for us to stand out in this evil generation. Praise God. Amen. Can we, yeah, Sister Favor, thank you so, all right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Please uh, help us uh, to notice. I'm going to do a teaching sometime I don't know when, but let's note it down. Three men in scripture. That's the title. From what you know, three men in scripture. Not today. Just note it and just let's keep the reminder. So three men in scripture. Uh, Pastor Sharon opened it up and uh, Sister Favor, you know, when he mentioned Solomon and then uh, uh, without dealing. All right. Praise the Lord. So today we are looking at the place of your strength. Can we echo it together? Again? It's simple, where you are strong in life. We need strength to accomplish anything in life and to become anything meaningful in life. We need strength. The Bible says, Why you were, when we were without strength, Christ died for what? The ungodly. You know what they call strength? You see, the life of God, all of the things, the strength of God, the, all of the properties of God, sometimes they use the synonym strength. Praise the Lord. So we need strength where you are strong in life. To move from, you see, look at motion. Motion is strength. The Bible says, and the spirit what? That is strength. Motion to move from one point to what? To another. Now, let me ask you, when you are sick, there are some times you are sick, you can't move. <laughs> you are sick, you can't move. Praise the Lord. For you to move from one class 
to another class in school, it is what? Strength. You have to pass a series of exams, some qualification. That. For you to live in a house today, you need strength. You need financial what? Strength. He said, by strength shall no man what? Prevail. You need strength to prevail in life. He said that you might be strengthened with might by his spirit, where in the inner man that Christ will dwell in us by faith. When we are weak in destiny, everything about our life will be weak. No, when we are weak, our destiny will be weak. Either you build your house or you, you pay and rent a house. Or maybe they give you by inheritance. To feed your family now is what? Strength. But another kind of strength. Now for you to look at the dealings of God. How do you go through the dealings of God? The Bible says Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of what? Of the devil. You need strength in that place. You are, you are not eating for 40 days. If you don't eat for two days, is it a joke? Eh? How many of us, how many of us have stayed seven days without food? No food, no water. In the wilderness. Not in your bedroom. You know you are fasting your inside room. You are, you are putting fan. <laughs> Some of you are putting AC on yourself inside the room. You know, you know the room is moist. So it supply water to your body. But this one he was fighting right in the wilderness. The water in the body was drying up. But when you fast, water is supplied to your body. Through, this, through your pores. That's it. In this place now, that, you know, look at in the night now. When you wake up, you see water on metal. There is water in the atmosphere. But not in the wilderness. Not in the wilderness. And so Jesus was there 40 what? Days. You need strength. What about prayer? Um, you, you look at it now, you want to just pray now, the thing is not entry. You change gear, it's not, you just change gear. <laughs> it's not entry. Prayer. Oh God, I want to start New Year resolution, Abby. Is it New Year resolution or, you know? <laughs> oh, I want to pray. This is how God, when, maybe when you come for meetings, you know, you are, you are just charged up. You go day one, day two, <laughs> day three. <laughs> it's what that the whole thing starts what? The whole thing starts uh, coming down. Don't lead our children to play. Jesus said, allow the little children to what? To come to me. Children don't disturb us in our meeting. They are part of what? They are part of the meeting. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, so we need what? Strength. Prayer, all kinds, everything you do, you need strength. You know that it might be a different kind of what? Strength. Amen. So this, uh, we are going to be running a series uh, in the course of uh, throughout the month of October. Like we sent out in the announcement that went out earlier on the place of your strength, volume one, volume two, volume three, and up until volume four. The remaining four Wednesdays in this month of October 2024. So once again, welcome to Tyranos Hall, Akure, Ondo State, Nigeria. Can we celebrate our father? Amen. Can we say, I need strength? I have strength. Christ has made me strong. The Spirit of God in me supplies strength to my mortal body. My spirit is strong. My faith is strong. My heart for God is strong. I'm a prevailing one. I prevail everywhere. In the name of Jesus, I have spiritual strength. I have uh, moral strength. I have financial strength because God has made me strength, strong. I receive favor for strength, spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. So you can understand that scripture now that why we without what? Strength. That Christ died for what? The ungodly. Amen. So the number one, the first place of your strength and we should be the volume of our teaching is uh, your calling. Who we are called to be. The first place, where is my strength? Where am I? Where is my strength? Where can I be strong in life? 
how can I be strong? The first place of your, according to this teaching, is not in no particular order, but the number one we are choosing, we are picking with is your calling. Who you are called to be. The mango tree is only strong as it remains the mango tree. God called the mango tree to be what? The mango tree. The lion is only strong as it remains what? The lion. Just imagine the lion now, you see a shark. Shark is swimming inside water. And then the lion too, say, ah, ah. And then he jumps into the water to swim. What happens to the lion? Right? But the lion is there in his uh, jungle. And when he roars as the lion, every other animal will be running. Can he roar inside the water? You are strong in the life that God has given you. Can we, so that, I'll take it again. The life that God has given you. Praise the Lord. The life you have been, you have been given. Sharon is only strong as his Sharon. Praise the Lord. Uh, fortune will only be strong as she is what? Fortune. When you want to become something else, you enter into weakness. Can you imagine the purple tree? If the purple tree should see the, if he has the kind of attitude we have, if it's like us, thank God for purity in nature. You know, nature is pure. Yes, to a very good degree. They abide in their what? In their calling. Imagine the purple tree is like us. If he sees the mahogany tree, he starts despising himself. Abby? By the time the purple tree sees the mahogany tree in terms of strength, in terms of height, and everything, he starts looking down on himself. Praise the Lord. It's human being that say, I wish I'm yellow. Eh? Abby? Uh -huh. I wish I am what? Tall. Hmm? Abi, I wish I am, uh, you know, like that. All this wish, 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 wish. That is what I'm saying. That anytime we wish that one, we are deviating into weakness. The psalmist said, I am fearfully and what? Wonderfully what? Made. Who you are called to be. It starts from your, the way you look physically. I take it again. It starts from what? The way you look what? Physically. You know, most times you can't see yourself. So that's why you fall into the error. You want to be something else. Look, look at it now. If you look at her, uh, look at Sister Helen now. She's not unique in her look. Look at uh, Pastor Rue. Is he not unique in his look? He, wh where are we getting all these things from? Do you get? That's why I see people go into surgery, Abby. Surgery into bleaching, into all kinds of things. The skin that God has given you. There is no skin like it. Praise the Lord. Look at the, the thing has gone very far now. You know, you know, the evil one has taken it to another level now. Someone say, I want, I don't, I'm, I'm a man. I want to be what? A woman. Now start doing transgender. You are you are looking at them that are doing transgender. You discover that you have a, a portion of that same element inside of your inside of you. When you are not abiding, or the word abide, when you are not satisfied with who God has made you to be. You know that the only is at another level. Your own too is there. I am David and I am David. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Packaged as the perfection of the Most High. Praise the Lord. Somebody will tell you it's more beautiful than you and all kinds of... Uh, a son, the Bible says they that compare themselves to themselves, they are not what? They are not wise. I'm more beautiful than you. Now we even do beauty pageant. Can you make a hair on somebody's body? A hair. Praise the Lord. A hair. Uncle, you are welcome. Couples sit together in the meeting. So, eh? Uh -huh. So, amen. 
Come and sit with your wife. You're welcome. I was work today. All right. That's a bro bola. Amen. Praise the Lord. What was the last statement I made? Yeah, it showed that we are following. Can you make a hair? You know, you see, men are, it's pride. It's arrow. He said, look at it, you call it beautiful pageant on earth. It's arrogance and rebellion to, in, the, in the realms of the most high. When you carry two human beings, you are comparing them. You say, this one is more beautiful. Maybe the way you do it, catwalk, abi, and everything. Or you say, this one has this part for men. Mr. Olympia, abi, and Marshall and everything. That is a heavy conk rebellion. God made everyone unique. And that's the beauty and the genius of God. They say our fingerprint are both. It's what? It's all different. And so our faces are what? Different. Different. So where are you strong? It's abiding in who what? In who you are. Who God has made you. So I say you are strong when you are living and walking in what you're calling. When I say calling, let our mind not jump too far. Eh? But, uh, I'm called to be an apostle. And I've been, no, in the life that God has given you. Every one of us we are called. God calls us into what? A life. God has called me into David. So I'm David Abubakar. Praise the Lord. You see, if you accept yourself like that, so you're able to accept other, you're able to accept their differences. You know, you'll be fighting again when we are different, right? They look at the man and woman, I know too much fight. Man, you'll be able to accept the woman, and then the woman will be able to accept the man. There is no need for feminism, there is no need for what? For chauvinism. I am a man, I am unique in my nature. And then the woman is different, she's unique in her nature. I know my uniqueness and I know her uniqueness. And I can see the way what they complement together. This is my wife. Does she look like me? Look at my hair. Look at her hair. Is it the same thing? Eh? I can, we cannot start fighting. Why is, her, why is your hair not like my hair? Or why is my hair not like her hair? Amen. My hair and her hair, when they join together, is it not perfection? Is it how God has made us? You see why the whole, why the foundation of the whole world is out of course, upside down. So you are strong when you are living and walking in your calling, who God has called you to what to be. You are weak when you are living outside your calling, who God has called you to be. That will be one of your very first weakness in life. Your calling is your strength in life. What is the, I go again, what is the strength of the mango tree? It's being what? The mango tree. And it brings out the mango what? Fruit. Now, we, you know, we compare. That is when you start comparing, all this comparison is part of the thing that is killing us. And that's why companies are very, very ruthless. Ruthless. They don't pay their staff because everybody wants to declare profit, right? It's not the same spirit of Babylon. Right? You want to outpace one another, you are, you are amassing all the way just to declare profit. Amen. Even the staff that are producing that profit, you will cheat them 20 times. Just, this other, it's not money that some of these big companies, it's not money they want now. It's just this competition. I am number one, you are number one, this one. They are just competing in their, in their, in their, in their this thing. Some human beings in Nigeria here now, their own competition, no, it's not money now. They have now become the richest in Nigeria. They want to be among the richest in Africa. That's all. From Africa now, they want to enter the global list, four list of uh, billionaires. So they won't want, they can't do charity, they can't do anything for people in their village. They can't do things for people because of this competition is driving them. And they stay inside this competition, one day they died and they are buried like foul. They die without being desired because they have not done anything for mankind. The multitude of wealth that they have. How do you have that volume of wealth? And your city will not feel your impact. No, look at it. Your city will not feel your impact. In fact, you'll be cheating them. Because world gives you capacity. It gives you strength. It gives you power. You start manipulating. Start controlling the politics of your country. Start manipulating your, your, your town, your city, and everything. Amen. 
When you are weak in your calling, you are weak in life. When you are strong in your calling, you are strong in life. Let's take, the, let's take it further now. Your calling is your divine word placement. Can we echo it together? Yes. Like what we have been giving illustration, you know, giving examples uh, uh, since that uh, God has placed the purple tree, has placed the mahogany tree, God has placed the elephant, right? God has placed the butterfly. Look at, is the butterfly not beautiful? In his own rank. You know, there's what we call the do pollination abbey, pollinate uh, flower, and the elephant is there in his own right. And God give them different environment. Where the elephants live, I don't think but butterfly will, I don't know if they live in that environment, but amongst people, they dwell with human beings here and there and stuff like that. So your calling is your divine what? Placement. Can we echo it together? My calling is my divine placement. Again. That's where God has placed you. The purpose God has given you in life. That is your placement. Now, sister, promise one of our divine placements, right? We have to teach this thing now. One of your divine placements is that you are the woman. Praise God. You know, these are things that in the, in the, in the past, you think they are not, uh, what I, I don't I know I'm the woman. You take it for granted now. Abby, uh, God has placed you in the, you know, when God created my same male and female world, created it. So any human being that is coming into the world, he said that he placed you in, as the man or what? As what? The woman. And then you are okay there. You don't want to leave that place. I want to be what? The man. And because God gives man knowledge, we want to use that knowledge against God, technology. We start using that technology to change our physical body to look like the man or to look like the woman. We cross what? To cross our nation. Amen. So that's why I say your calling is your divine what? Placement. And it starts from where? Number one, from your body. Where God has placed you. These are things we need to start teaching our children. You, you think they are very small. They are not small. You need to start telling them now. Well, now the devil has now promoted it now. You see, government, you know. There are nations. I say, well, you don't know who you are. Whether you so you decide whether you are a man or what, you, are, you don't know yet. The child will decide. Not the child that decides, God has already decided. When he brought you into the world, God has already decided. He said, What well, God has decided, let no man what decide again. Are we there? So help us note it down. Number one, God place you in the body. I said that male or what? Female. That's it. The day I start trying to behave like the woman now, I will enter into what? Weakness. And that's where my, the road to my failure starts. Because I must be the man. And when my wife starts, I want to become the man. No, this one is even to the extreme, we want to change physically. But we know we do it relationally. Where the woman wants to be behaving like the man in the marriage. And the man wants to be behaving like the woman in the marriage. When you are married, know the place of the woman and know the place of the man in the, in the marriage. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Then you let it be. Let it be. You know, this one, you, you, you give us, if you, tramp, if you trample on somebody's fear, the person will fight back. You see where crisis started coming from. There are things I know my wife will take this decision. Whatever decision, I'll follow you. Praise the Lord. When we were working, when I was working in Undo, Undo is like one hour from here. When I was uh, when I was working with the bank, then, then uh, what happened? You know, it's my wife that takes the children to school in the morning, and she picks them what in the evening. Me, I have, I've gone to work, leave them while they are dressing because my I walk one hour away from the next town here. I was working in Undo town. My wife was working in Akure, and the children were schooling in Akure. So I go very early before I come back. Sometimes I'll be coming back 7 p.m., right? 6.30, 7 p.m., 7.30, or sometimes 8 p.m. She'll have picked them from the house. They've already been in the house. There are some days that they have slept before I came back. Now, I will not stand up. I will not be determined the school she should go and pick them. No, look at it. 
So all those school decisions, which one we looked at, okay, the one that will be more convenient for you and everything like that, you then give them, you give people their what? The space. Praise the Lord. What we eat in the house, the administration of all of those things is not my, right? <laughs> Amen. So she takes that administration. Administration. So you give people what? The space. Calling, placement, purpose draws the strength of God into our life. God put Adam in, in Eden's garden. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. Can we read it? Can we read our Bible? Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. God put Adam in Eden's garden. Praise the Lord. When did God create when God created man, did he choose where he was going to live? Eh? Did he show did the man choose where he was going to live? The whole world, look at it now, one man, the whole of the earth. <laughs> Amen. Look at one man, the whole earth. But God came and said, Where? Well, come. He took him. This is where what? You see the most high. Number one. Number two. Part of Adam's life assignment was in the Garden of Eden. The first one was Genesis 2.8. This one is now Genesis 2.15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and what? And to keep it. God gave him assignment. Where is the assignment? In the Garden. What if you go to another land? Maybe if had, Adam had come to Akure. You know, Akure was existing that time. Maybe they may not have called it Akure. Yes. Maybe what if you had come to Akure to come and dress and to keep it? Eh? Eh? No, can you see? You know, this entail, it tells us who God is. Where God put you geographically and spiritually, that is the place of your calling. The first one was physical. The second one was spiritual. See, don't take it for granted. Any, where you stay. You know, you just pack your bag now. You are in this city, Abby. Eh? You just pack your bag anyhow. You just be moving anyhow. I say the place of your strength. I say number one, your calling. Who God, where God has what? Place your divine placement. That's where you find him. But put them in Eden's way. God. Do you know as small as living in a city? You think, oh, you know the Holy Ghost, ah, this and that. That's what Pastor Sharon was telling us. When you were talking about doctrine, say knowledge, Abby, you are accumulating knowledge as doctrine, but what? You have a connection with God. Jesus said, my father tells me what to say and how to say it. As small as the city you live, don't you? as believers, as brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, as important, the place, the physical location you live is very, very important to your destiny. The physical what? Location. God put Adam in it. Number two, at geography, at spiritual what? Placement. God gave you an assignment. Tend the garden and what? And keep it. God gave him a walk. Gave him an assignment. It was a divine assignment. Spiritual as anything God tells you to do is spiritual. He said, God is spirit and what? And like, when you just read about ten, the garden, you just think it's physical work. No, whatever God tells you is what? His spirit and what? And life. That was a spiritual calling. Ten, the garden. It's just like God comes and tells you now that, oh, take care of, children. I'm giving you children ministry. But he say you take care of the garden. So where God put you geographically and spiritually, that's the place of your calling. So we we'll see that Genesis 2, Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 and verse 15. There you will find him. And it's there you will abide with him, and it is there you will walk with him. 
Geography is a first place of call, both physical and spiritual world, geography. Physical geography and spiritual world, geography, assignment that God gives you. Miss that, and you miss the very heart of your entire calling. God wants you to be in Akure, eh? and you are in a kitty state. He wants you in Ondo state, and you are in a kitty state. You are out of his, uh, out of his immediate plan for you. He can see, you know, God is God is so big, the heart of God is so wide. He can see work out something for you. But the original, you are out of it. It is that very, very what? Important. So please don't take it for granted. Always pray. And I'll keep it in prayer. Where God has placed you, that is where He will walk with you. And that is where you will hear His sound or His voice. There you will see the divine presence. Where did they hear the sound of the Lord God walking, Adam and Eve? Where? Where? You see where God placed you. Sometimes I say you are not hearing his voice. You are not hearing his voice because you are not where he has what? Has put you. Both physically and what? Spiritually. That's why it's very important the place you worship. The congregation you worship. You have to be very, very extremely sensitive. Right? You have to make sure that you are what? Led and in God's leading. Because it is where God has placed you. That is where he is. He said they found, they had the voice of God walking where? In the garden. He was not walking in the land of Assyria. You know, he was not walking in the, in the, in the, which other land? There were so many lands in uh, Genesis chapter 2. Look at Genesis chapter 2. Where it says a river passes, uh, and the river, uh, it will have Ethiopia, right? The land of Ethiopia. We have uh, the land of what? Assyria, right? We have again the land of what? Okay, Ethiopia, right? We have River Hidikel, uh, which, uh, Assyria, uh, we have Assyria, we have Euphrates, we have Ethiopia. Those are the three lands. Where was God walking? For you, you find him walking in Eden's garden. Where is your garden? Eden garden represents physical placement and what? Spiritual what? Placement. God physically put him there and then God gave him a spiritual assignment. And what was that assignment? Ten what? A garden. And that is where God walks. Are we together so far? I take it again. Where God has placed you, that is where he will walk with you. And that is where you will hear his sound or his voice. There you will see the divine presence. Genesis chapter 3 verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Where he has placed you in now, four placements in life. No, five. I want to talk about five placements. I say where you are strong is where? The place of where? Of your calling. Who God has called you to what? Who God calls you to be. That's what I mean by what? Calling. Right? There's a calling that God calls you to be an evangelist, an apostle, and a teacher. That's not the one. That is part of it. But I'm looking at it in a holistic, in the life that God has what? Given you. It is that life that keeps Johnny, Johnny, and Johnny you to become an evangelist. It's that life that Johnny, Johnny, and Johnny is to make to Johnny to make you become what? An apostle. But it does not start from the apostle or the evangelist. It starts from where? From somewhere. You have to first of all accept that what? You are a man. And you are what? A woman. When God sends any human being into the world, He sends them as what? Either what? Male or what? Female. You are you remain there. Amen. There are four calling. Number one, body. Your, your body location. Now, Mikey, I say we need, we need to start teaching this thing now, right? You know, if you are teaching this kind of thing, maybe uh, 50 years ago, they will say, What are you saying? If you don't want to teach, right? So body, the body that God has called you into, either male or what? Or female, and you abide what? There. Amen. So body what? The first location is what? The body. Body what? Location. The body that God has called you into, either male or what? Female. Number two, geographical location. 
where God has placed you. These are the places of your strength. I am the man. I am abiding as the man. The purple tree is only useful as it remains the purple tree. Any attempt to because the purple tree wants to become the mahogany tree, it will waste its life. Maybe if it stretch, it will break. And once it breaks, you will cook my cut up the remaining one and throw it away. Use it to do firewood. But once it's, remain, once it's still abiding as the purple tree, when you eat the purple fruit, oh, this is so sweet. You are looking forward to the next season, right? So you are preserving it. You are preserved by abiding in your calling. Number two, geography, right? And we give an example of Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. God took the man and placed him in Eden's garden. Number three, vocation. Your vocation, the work that God has given you. Vocation. He said, turn the garden and what? Work. Work too is very, very important. So, some of all the work we are doing, please don't despise it. You know, sometimes eh, it might not be the destination. Praise the Lord. The work you are doing might not be what? It's not the destination, but you are somebody on a journey. It's just like uh, when uh, Joseph was in Potiphar's house. You know, you have every reason to despise it. Joseph was a prince of many colors. From where he's coming from. But if he had not been diligent in, in uh, Potiphar's house, how would he have done? Would he have been able to succeed when he became the, the ruler of Egypt? No. So sometimes, you know, the work you are doing, you are despising it. And this and that, this is not. You're always looking at the destination. Before the destination, there is the pathway. And that's why Jesus said, I am what? I am the way. I'm the way. There is the way and there is the destination. Don't despise the way. When you despise the way, you will not arrive at the destination. Do I take it again? When you despise the way, you will not arrive at what? At the destination. It's just like, look at footballers now. You don't like training. Eh? You know, that training is the way. Every day they train, the coach give you instruction, you despise it, you hate it. And then, oh, you want to play in what Cup final? If you despise the way, you will not get to the destination. Because it's the way that takes you to the destination. Don't despise the work that you are doing. Beggars. Saturate it with thanksgiving. And then the God, you know, the God that lifts men, the lift her up of our head, induces it, can lift you up to a higher work a higher vocation or a higher calling in your vocation. Be thankful where you are, full of thanksgiving. If you are mopping the floor, you are mopping it saturated with thanksgiving. Are we here? Are we together? What did I say? Don't despise what? I said the place of our, our, our placement. I have mentioned three now. Number one. What's number one? Your body what? Yeah, the body that God has placed you in. As a male or what? As a female. Number two, geographical. Don't despise it. Some of you can just start despising it. You know, these are a thing that the devil does. You just start despising. Even God wants to take you to some places. But if you start despising where you are, you will not get the journey. God wanted them to spend 40 days in the wilderness. But because they despised the way, despised the whole process, the 40 days became how many years? 40 years. You know, God even intends to take you to another a city that he has prepared to take you. But because you despise this present city, you are not going anywhere. You are not going anywhere. And if you force yourself to live there and go to that place, you become like a bitter Mara, Naomi. You enter that city. But when you enter that city, it's bitterness you see. If you force your way, you can always leave. But when you leave, you become Mara. They don't call me Naomi, call me what? Mara. Bitter. So you are full of thanksgiving, you are full of joy, you are rejoicing, you are just tired of the city. This is a spiritual warfare. This, you see, this is where the devil, this is how the devil hit us, break our legs. You don't know he has broken your legs, he has speaking in tongues. You know, tongue talking, devil chasing. You know, Satan has broken your two legs and he's sitting on you. And you are saying you are devil chasing. Amen. Number three. Number one again, the body that God has placed you. Number two, the physical location God has placed you. Number three, 
vocation, the work that what God has placed you. Let me give you an example. Some of you, they are, they will, they are, your boss is even cheating you, or the person you are working with. It is not a ground for you to complain. Yes. Oh, government is cheating us. Don't. You see that thing? It should, it, once it enters your spirit, it will pollute you. Joseph was, uh, uh, Jacob was cheated for 20 years. But Jacob walked with the whole of his heart. He was, did he complain? He read one book, Joseph was, no, he only mentioned it when he was talking to what? When he was having a judgment day with a Laban. Laban. He said, he changed my wages, what? 10 times. But he said he walked with the whole of his heart that sleep has departed from his eyes. He said, in the day the heat consumed me, and at night the frost consumed me, that sleep is departed from my eye. In the midst of being cheated for 20 years, Jacob was still faithful to the same master. These are men that will enter into the covenant blessings of God. The master is cheating you, but you are still faithful. He said, for you, he said you don't serve men, for you serve the Lord what? Christ. Everything you are doing, do it as unto who? As unto Christ. He said, for you serve the Lord Christ. Colossians. Oh, yeah, because my boss is, is not faithful. Me too, I know what? Be faithful. You are, you are living in rebellion. Rebellion does not bring any blessings from God at any time. Do it and wait for the God, the God Yahweh that see it all. And he will reward you in due season. Praise the Lord. So those of you that are working in employment, can you go there with a renewed fire? An energy and be working at that song. It's not that it's not that work that promotes you in life. God is the lifter up of our head. He said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Can you see? Vocation, right? Just be okay. Salary is plenty, salary is not plenty, and everything. Turn it to thanksgiving, turn it to joy. Right? Turn it to strength. This, are, this is what we call spiritual warfare. You know, I've been, we've been doing a series on the weapons of our what? Warfare. Last, uh, two weeks ago, we talk about volume six, what? The, the helmet of salvation, the hope of salvation. That's it. Number four. What's the fourth one? No, I've not mentioned it now. Spiritual what? Yes, yeah, spiritual location. Where is that spiritual location? Genesis chapter 2. Let me, let's start it. Gen, number one, body that God has placed you. That is Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Everything is in Genesis chapter 2. Or everything I'm going to teach us now. The five places God has placed you in life. Number one, your, your body, right? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. God breathed into God from the dust of the earth. He breathed into the dust. And man became what? A living soul. And that man is either male or what? Female. It's not male and female that come out together. He said that what? You come out as male or what? Or female. Some people say they don't even want to be human being and they are dog. Right? And so in all of those ones, so number one. Number two, geographical location. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. The God took the man and put him in Eden's garden. Give him a specific location. Do you know what that is? I've done a teaching on this. It's on YouTube. You can check it on our Telegram page. Uh, uh, fulfilling our what? Fulfilling your destiny. I did a series on it, volume one, volume two, and volume three. You can go and check it on YouTube, fulfilling your destiny. Volume one, volume two, volume three. Volume one is the land of your destiny. Volume two is the, the people of your destiny. And then volume three is the work of your destiny. Please, you can check it online in, on YouTube, fulfilling your destiny. David uh, Abubakar, uh, uh, you see, the, see them there, volume one, two, and three. So I said, number no, geography, Genesis chapter 2, verse 8, right? Then vocation, Genesis, which I call it, part of spiritual calling, vocation, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And God put the man in the garden of Eden to dress it and what? To keep it. How can I be dressing there? You know, you know God just gave him dominion, right? You know, you just wave your hand like this. Eh? You know, you wave his hand like all the animals. You know, if you just wave his hand like this, you just wave his hand. You know, all the animals will come. All of them. The man will now go and become a gardener. He said, God humbled us from the beginning. He gave the man dominion over the whole creation, and God subjected the man to being a gardener. Go and tend in the garden. Very humble work. Praise the Lord. How can I? They now, they now make you a president now, and they say you'll be mopping the floor. Yeah, that was what happened to Adam. Tend the garden. Adam had dominion over the whole earth. 
everything that creep everywhere, dominion of power, or massive authority. And then God called into what to many a war. Say, tend what? The God. You know, some of us are already very big now. I know God has said, you have some small money, you know. You are the breadwinner. You have money in the family. How can I wash plates? You right? How can I go wash plates? How can I wash, how can I do, you know, how can I wash clothes? You know, some of us have, have grown all those kinds of stuff. You have become maybe, you are now one boss, one director. How can they see director washing plates in the kitchen? Do you get it? How can they see and everything? See, God gave him high authority, but God subject him to lowliness. Ten what? They got it. Vo- vocation, right? Genesis 2.15. Then number three, number four, spiritual word. Please read. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof you shall what? Die. This is the divine commandment. Now I know he gave him work, but this one is a commandment. God commanded the man. You see your spiritual vocation, or location, vocation, whatever, spiritual location. He said, don't eat this one, this thing. This, this, that instruction is spiritual. It has nothing to do with the earth or something. And this one has to do with obedience for God. This is where God wants to prove the love of the man, whether the man will obey him or not. You find, you find this in, uh, you find the ways of God, what God was trying to achieve here, you find it actually in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. He said, God caused you to wander this so many years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you to see what is in your heart, whether you obey him or not. All the years in the wilderness. So God put that Allah, that tree, Allah, that tree in the garden, gave that instruction so that to humble the man and test him and to see what is in his heart, whether the man will obey him or not. God is always very particular about obedience. If you start doing anything in your life, you want to see whether you will obey him or not. The same thing he did with the Son of God, Jesus Christ. After all, Jesus, 33 years he has been pure, no sin and everything. Like, after, that baptism, after that baptism of John, the Spirit led him to the wilderness. And the Father was washing to see what the Son of God would do. The same temptation that Adam failed, give it to my son. And then he was washing. A lot of times, God wants to see what you will do. God will put you in situation. He will put you in circumstances. You know why? Because you want to see what Joseph will do. You want to see what is in your heart. That, that's the whole look at, read it Deuteronomy chapter 2 Deuteronomy chapter 8 this one now is uh, upgrading to, to, to the spirit uh, sphere. are we there Deuteronomy chapter 8 let me read from verse 1 all the commandments which I command you this day shall you observe to do that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God led you these 40 years in the wilderness. I take verse 2 very slow. You shall remember all the way. Can you see? So the man that God was leading them, not what? Because God could not lead them in another way. But God was leading them in that manner because he was looking for something. You know, the first time he led them, he led them to a place where there was no water. They started complaining, the water is, he said, oh, he said, lady, so even you, the way God is moving with you in your life, he takes you to some people, some people disappoint you, some people fail you, some people eat your money, some people use you, some people do this thing. It's not about them, who. Are you hearing me? It's not about them, it's about what? God wants to see what is in your heart. I take it again. He said, you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God led you these 40 years in the wilderness. The way he led you. He said, number one, to humble you and to prove you, to test you, to know what was in your heart. God is particular about the hearts of men. Sometimes it can dry the fountain of your finances. Eh? Dry the fountain of your finances you want to hear. He just want to wash. Sometimes he can give you plenty of finances. You still want to what? Wash. Money has come to your hand now. What are you going to watch? To humble you and to prove you, to know what was in your heart, whether you will 
keep his commandment or what? Or not. Either you obey him. So God said, put that tree there. Of every tree, eat every tree in the garden. But this one, don't eat it. What was he looking for? Huh? Yes. Everything that God has done for man, God created the world six, six days. God went ahead, creating the whole world, created perfection. Yes, you know, created beauty, created perfection. And then the man came, he handed everything over to the man. The man did not make a single hair. He did not make a single stone on planet Earth. And God gave everything to him. You are the Lord and the God of this world. And then God stepped back. What will this man do? I see this tree, don't eat it. What was the first tree they ate in the garden? I don't have time to prove it here. Eh? The first thing they ate, hmm? yes. the first meal of man in scripture is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The first meal of man recorded in scripture, the first thing we ate recorded in scripture is the tree of the knowledge of good and what? Evil. That particular one, they said that's where they, what were they doing under that tree? Eh? You know, you have to even be under a tree before you eat it now. What were they doing under that tree? Right? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, let's uh, move so that we can round it up. I said number spiritual what? Calling, right? I talk about uh, uh, spiritual calling, which is Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. Number four. And number five, marriage. Marriage. Same Genesis chapter 2. Marriage. From verse 21. And the Lord, Genesis chapter 2, from verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon what? Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh inside thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, and what? Flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father. And mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. The fifth one is what? Marriage. Be content with who you have married. You know, you have the, you have the privilege of choosing before you marry. Eh? But now that you find yourself in the marriage, if you are not in, it's different. But now that you are in the marriage, you have to be content with the marriage, with all contentment. Don't desire another. Uh, my husband is did this, I desire this one. My wife is did this, I desire. You have to stay there. That is where you are what? Strong. It is in that union you are strong. Can you see? Look at when God brought uh, Eve. Adam started doing analysis. Eh? Her nose is not long like the nose of the lion or the... He should have half trunk now like elephant has trunk. He should have this. Just be content with it. Stay in your marriage. Appreciate your marriage and don't desire another. Try to see how we can build things together. How we can nurture things together with the help of the Lord. All of the changes we want, all of the things we want God to do, why not start believing him? The things you want to see change in your spouse, let me ask you. Have you prayed enough about it? You know, first of all, going to complaining, complaining before we talk about what? You don't, as you see it, you just jump, you start talking. You say, Father God, this issue. You have conversation with it about God. And then you can now sit down later, you know, you can... Look for not just go and not attack. Now look for the moment, you know, where in the course of prayer, can we pray that God should help us in this area? Even me, I'm struggling in this area. Can we pray together that God will help us in this area? Can you see? You know, you're addressing the matter. Jointly, as you are praying, like that. Today, myself and my wife will pray. And one of the things we pray, I say, God should help us in discipline. I will be very, very what? In discipline. We are now calling some specific area. Now, this is, my wife, this is in discipline. I have my share, you have your share. Let's go to God for help and for what? Mercy. In discipline. Because the road to vision that leads to the peak of the mountain is discipline. It's a very strong road. 
let me show you now. You don't know how indisciplined you are. Sometimes you say, let's be doing this together. Maybe vision, oh, we want to be doing this together. After some time, you stop doing it. What has caused it? Eh? Hey, uh, Sister Joy, you are in Sharon. If you agree, let's do this together. After some time, you do it. Sometimes you don't do it again. Has it ever happened? Let me know so that uh, we can come and sit under your feet. Eh? You know what, you know what has happened? It's in discipline. Discipline. Oh, my dear, can we be praying together this period? Let's be praying together. Oh, let's be studying together. You do it for one week. After some time, you disappear. It's in discipline. Praise you. Oh, you notice a fault in your spouse. Oh, my spouse is weak in this area. Let's say, for instance, now, oh, you might someone that, you know, she's still struggling to cook or something like that. Okay. Okay, let's do it together. Oh, let's we'll go to market together. We'll be in the kitchen together. Let's learn this, uh, this food part of food. So sometimes you stop doing it again. So, you see, discipline helps us to stay true, to, to stay uh, true on the course of vision to the end. It's discipline. That's why those of you that are working in employment, they say you should resume by social time. By that time, you are there. Right? By that time, you are there. But your own this thing, you just do it anyhow. You see, one of the big problems we have in this Christian faith, big, is what? The discipline. That's why we make New Year resolution every year, we don't keep it. I want to study my Bible now. Hey, God, this and that. Hey, this and that. This and that. After some time, you treat it. You know what's happening? Eh? In discipline. So I want, I want us to pray now. Well, let's recount the five things to say. Number one, I say, where you are strong is where? Hmm? It's where, where you are strong is where God are what? The place of your calling. Where God has placed you where? In life. Just remaining there. Okay, let me give you an example now. A soldier, a soldier. Eh? He's only strong when he's in the army, right? But if he now live maybe in this army and he's in his duty post. Now maybe, or let's say a police officer now, they posted him there. And then if he's wearing his uniform, he's standing in the place of his duty in his office, you know he's strong. But if he's removed his uniform and he comes to where people are drinking beer and everybody's fighting, he's fighting too. Does he have authority in that place? They will even put him in prison. But the policeman, does he have authority? If he's passing and he sees, he sees two people fighting, you know he has authority. He will come in there in his authority. But now he has left the place of his calling. He has now come, he is now joining them, drinking, talking in the beer parlor. An argument starts, they are fighting to off his shirt and he starts fighting. Can he now use his authority that place? You see, you see, your, you see life. Please and please, I want to beg us. Let us go and renew ourselves on the altar of our calling. And our calling, I've, I've made it so simplified that I'm a man. Am I playing my role as a man well in my family? You know, as a young boy in this house, you know, not only when you are married, though, as a young under my your parents have expectation of you and stuff like that. That's why you won't try to let me do well. Let me be a proper child. Oh, as a, they have expectation. Oh, you have younger ones that are looking up to you. Timothy, you have younger ones. Yes. Are you playing your role in their life? Are you checking up on them? How are you doing? How is your life? How is you know life school? How is this one? That one? As the senior brother, God has placed every one of us somewhere. Number one, you as a man or as a woman. You understand? Number two, what's the second one? Geography. The city, the place, the city, the place, the land that God wants you to live there. What's number three? Vocation. That one is what? Work. You have to get it right. These are things you take to God in prayer. If you are doing the wrong vocation, you know you can never be so much blessed as you ought to be blessed. You understand? God wants you to sell pepper. You are selling onion. Right? That's it. Oh, God wants you this one. But some people say, this is the one I want to what? Do. Your own, you want to do. But can you allow God? Can you allow, can you just be open and let the Spirit of God move you so that I can do the Thing that God has ordained for you to do, you you be amazed at the level of prosperity that you experience. You will not struggle so well. You will walk like an elephant. You know, you walk like an ant and be eaten as what, as an elephant, because you see the blessing and the prosperity of God. 
Hey, I want to do, you know, I can't do it. Oh, do this. No, allow God. Some of us, because of our pride, you won't allow maybe your spouse or your husband to do what God is even leading them to do. You have the kind of job you want them to do. But that might not be the kind of job that God oh, might want them to do something else. Can you allow it? Number, that's number what? Three. Number four. Spiritual location. That God will give you the calling. God will give you commandment. God will give you instruction. This one, that one, He will give you. He said, don't eat of this tree. This, God wants to test you to see what is in your heart. And that one talks about love. You want to see your love. You want to see your obedience. And the last one is what? Marriage. Everything is in Genesis chapter 2. God has called you. God finished the story of our creation in Genesis chapter 1 and chapter 2. Especially for man. Genesis chapter 3 is the fall of man. Then all the problem, Christ. But God finished everything in Genesis 2. So everything is there. That's like a document. When you open it, you see a lot of things there. Especially Genesis 2. So many things are there. Can you begin to pray? Do you have any question? Take any question or something? No, can we just pray? Can we press into these things? The next 10 minutes to round up. Yeah? Can you begin to bless your father? What did you hear? What did you hear? And we'll be on our feet as we talk to our father. Father, thank you. Malata. Ishabalata. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Kabulata. Ishabalata. Le bubukutu malata. Ekata. Le kabalata. Bulukutu mata. Jesus, thank you. Oh, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Can we take this word home? And go and press into it. This is where you are strong. Nobody can defeat you where God has put you. No man, no spirit, no devil can touch you, can defeat you where you are planted by God, where God has placed you. Except you live there by yourself. By yourself, you live there. Adam and Eve never fell into weakness. Until they left where God has placed them. Don't eat of this fruit. So long as they don't eat that fruit, there is nothing that can touch them. But the day they ate it, they left where God has placed them. And then they entered into weakness. Why we were yet without strength? Why we were weak? Christ died for the ungodly. That was why, that's how it happened. That's how it happened. We entered into weakness. Into weakness. Because we left our place of habitation. We left our dwelling place. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Oh, Father, thank you. Balata. Keleta lisha balata. Mokata. Le bobo lisha balata. Ekata. Oh, God, bless be your name. Jesus, ke bolota. Likata. Mbobonta li shebelita, e kata li shebelikata, mbobonto belikata. Oh Jesus, thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, Lord. You have made us strong for yourself. You have made us strong for yourself. Malata li shebalata, e koto malanta, mbolo koto li shebelikata. Le bokoto malakata, mbolo koto malakata, le koto li shebebe kata. Oh Jesus, thank you, mantata, le bokoto balakata, e koto li shebebe kata, mbalata, tantata le kata. Oh Father, thank you. Oh Jesus, thank you. The psalmist wrote, Turn us again, O God of hosts, and cause your face to shine. And we shall be saved. Turn us again. 
Is there has a cry of repentance? A repentant heart? A heart that is ready to amend its ways? A heart that wants to amend its way? Turn us! And we shall be turned and we will turn, oh God. Shabbat Cause your face to shine. Oh Father, thank you. We shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you. Let your hand, the psalmist cried, the psalmist cried again, let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the son of man, whom you have made strong for yourself. Need strength to fulfill purpose to live our lives. Motion is strength. You need strength to move from one location to another. To move in life from one place of destiny to another place of destiny. To move from glory to glory. To move from faith to faith. You need strength. You need the strength of Jehovah God. Spirit, soul, and body. O kata, ya bolota, le bele kata, kotoli shabalata, yenga gabalata. Oh God, we bless you. Father, we thank your name. O malata, e kata, yenga gabolo kabalata, le kabolota, bishabalata, e ka, ye bele bele kabolota, malata bolo kata, e kata, e kotoli shabalata, ye kata bele kata. Oh God, who worship your holy name. Father, we honor you. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Then let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the son of man, whom you made strong for yourself. So will not we go back from you. Quicken us, and we will call upon your name. Turn us again, O oh God of hosts. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. That's Psalms 80. Psalms 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. You that lead your Joseph like a flock. You that dwell between the shadow being shine forth. But I will call upon your name. Call upon your name. In the name of Jesus. E bolota, le bolota, kelisha balata, mo kata li botalaka, e kalisha balata, bolo kata. Only one, thank you. But I will bless you. Give you praise. Give you praise. E shabalata, inga gale pele le le le. Only one, thank you. But I will thank you. Bless your name. Thank you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I will lift up our two hands. Say, not he that hears the word that is blessed, but he that what? He that is a doer of the word. The things we have had now, the things that have been communicated into our spirit, the impartation of life that we are receiving, let it become the river that we live inside. Fish live in, in water. We live in the waters of his world. I will lift up our two hands. Oh, Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, we bless you. Thank you for all that you are, all that you are doing in us. There is a calling in us. Our life is a calling. You have called us. You called us into humanity. You did not call us as angels. You called us as men. Thank you for this holy calling. Thank you for this hollow calling. Father God, thank you. It is as we open up to this calling, to this call, as we release ourselves into this call, that we are strong. That we are able to walk with you in fullness of life and glory. As we release ourselves, the river has a cause, it has a channel. It is only in following its cause, its channel, that the river can move and the beauty of the river will come out. 
Father God, thank you. You have made us either male or female. Help us to abide in the one that you have given us. Amen. You have called us to live in a geography. It is in that geography we we'll meet some specific calling, people that we we'll need in our life. We meet people in our geographical location. Yes. Father, thank you for where you have placed us. Help us not to despise it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The iniquity of this age to despise everything. So the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I will abide satisfied wherever I am. The land that you have placed us, that we will abide satisfied in that land. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You move Adam from one land to another land. That wherever you move us to, we will abide satisfied in that place. You move Abraham from one land to another land. That wherever you take us to, we are not strangers in that land, but because we are with the everlasting God. The whole land, the God of all, all land belongs to you. That wherever you place us, we will abide satisfied in that place. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the work that you are giving us. You are placed in our hands to do something. That will be satisfied in those work. The blessing and the favor that we are seeing will be satisfied. Our heart will not be ungrateful. Anything you give to us, we'll say, Father, we thank you. We we'll receive it with thanksgiving. The Bible says in Acts 2, they went from house to house, breaking bread and having joy. And then God was with them. Father, thank you. For the bread that we eat, the water we drink, the sun that shines upon us, and the air that we breathe day by day, we'll say thank you. Our Father God, thank you. Father, thank you for the word that you've given us. And also, Father God, thank you. Thank you for our spiritual life. Thank you for the word that you are bringing to us. Thank you for your divine instruction. Thank you for your judgment, your laws, your status. Thank you for your word. Father, thank you. Say, sanctify them by your word. By your truth, your word is truth. Thank you for your word in our spirit, man. We we'll live according to the word. The word you bring to us from time to time, spoken to us by your spirit, that will be brought to, uh, spoken to us by the angel. And also the word you bring to us through your people. And also the word you bring to us through the circumstances you arrange around, around us. Father God, thank you. And lastly, Father, thank you for our marriages. Those of us that are married, those of us that are yet marry. And those of us that is in your program for us to marry. Thank you, the marriages that will come into, Lord, will abide satisfied in those marriages. Amen. We will love the one that we marry and the one that you have given us. We will treasure them beyond all other human treasures in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our righteous Father. We receive help this day. We are helped of God. Father, thank you. Father, thank you. I will take this declaration, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you because you have made me strong for yourself. Every day I grow in strength. My faith grows. I go from faith to faith. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, every spirit of murmuring, spirit of dissatisfaction in me, I curse it from the root. In the name of Jesus. I'm a man of gratitude. I'm a woman of gratitude. I abide satisfied. In everything, my heart is full of thanksgiving. Oh, give me a new heart. We knew a right spirit within me. Full of praise. Full of thanksgiving. Father God, thank you. I prosper in all that I do. In the name of Jesus. I am saved in all that I do. My going out is saved. My coming in is saved. I grow in spirit. My spirit grows. My body is in health. My finances prosper. I am favored of God. And so I'm favored of all men. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our righteous Father. In Jesus' name. I won't take Psalm 23 together. Lord is my shepherd. Shall not want. Lie down in green pasture. He leads us beside the still waters. He restores our soul. He leads us in paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Don't walk through the valley of the shadow of death. We fear no evil, for thou art with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Prepare a table before in the presence of my enemy. Now I my head with oil, or cup runs over, surely. 
Mercy shall follow all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Can we put our hands together for the, the Lord? The Lord and our Master. Praise the Lord. So next week we are going to take uh, volume two of the place of your strength. And we are going to be looking at building on kingdom foundation. Amen. Amen. Again, what are we going to take again? Building on what? Kingdom. Building on kingdom foundation. And uh, Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Share the grace in fellowship. Jesus Christ. Love of God. And the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Greet one another. Before we go. Yes. Uh, okay.